Uh, hello, my name is Matthew, and I read the poem of the Thid. This is one of the earliest texts from medieval Spain, and it tells the story, uh, from what I can understand, it tells the story of a real-life person by the name of Roy Diez de Babar, otherwise known as the Thid, and uh, it tells the story of his adventures and conquests throughout Spain battling the Moors. And I had a tough time uh, with this poem. The beginning was uh, hard going. It starts with the Thid being banished by the King Alfonso and being um, uh, shunned and turned away from uh, all the towns that he is uh, visiting until finally he starts this war campaign against uh, the Moors. And the, the beginning of the poem is a succession of um, these uh, battles and strategies and uh, successes. Uh, the, the Thid is a nearly mythological, legendary, larger-than-life character. From what I understand now, he's a, a national hero, and this is a poem that uh, everyone in Spain uh, knows, knows the story of the Thid. But it's so uh, rich with uh, detail and uh, the landscape and geography of Spain and all of the place names. And I found um, it was tough um, to get my bearings on what was happening. There was a, a, a lot of um, detail and information uh, and hi historical context that uh, I just don't know enough about. And it's not repetitive, but um, we keep going from battle to battle. And I can read it and appreciate that if you understand the history or if, if you're a Spaniard, it could be uh, just fascinating to have this uh, tour through um, Spain and visiting all of these different places along with the Thid. Um, but it, it was interesting. It was um, uh, it was these ad ad adventures and exciting battles and the Thid is not just um, <clears throat> a brave soldier. He's also uh, a natural leader and a brilliant strategist and so uh, these problems arise, and we see the Thid solving uh, these issues in different ways. Um, but it, it was it was tough um, to sit back and just enjoy um, enjoy the story until about the halfway point. And there's a there's a turning point in in the poem where it goes from really large scale, uh, grand epic kind of poem into something much more uh, intimate and personal. So while throughout the poem, while these um, uh, battles are going on, while the Thid and his ever-growing um, group of troops and soldiers around him are um, having their conquests and, and winning, uh, the Thid is amassing uh, riches and treasures, um, gaining livestock and area, and periodically at, at the end of each one of these battles, he is sending people off to the king who banished him. <clears throat> He's sending him uh, spoils of war, so um, m money or jewelry or uh, livestock, horses, and the king is accepting these gifts um, with pleasure. And finally, the Thid makes uh, an overture uh, asking to be taken back into the kingdom. And the king agrees as long as the Thid will allow his two daughters, all the while the Thid has a wife and two daughters, um, the king agrees if the Thid will allow his two daughters to marry um, these two noblemen that are some 
in some relation to the king. And the, the Thid uh, consents and agrees uh, to, to this arrangement. And this is, this is when it gets um, into like a, a family feud. Uh, and I, I, I found myself just uh, riveted with the story when it became a little bit smaller. I, I could understand the um, human motivations and um, <clears throat> these uh, these two noblemen um, marry the daughters and we get uh, this great scene um, showing that the two noblemen are um, cowards and have a weak um, morality and um, <clears throat> things like that. Uh, there's this moment uh, after after the wedding ceremonies, everything's gone back to um, the Thid's normal routine. He is uh, sleeping in this room. He's sleeping on a couch, and uh, in the room there's a lion in this net, and the lion escapes out of the netting, and so there's a loose uh, a loose lion in this room. And the uh, fellow uh, soldiers and um, patri compatriots of uh, the Thid surround him to pr protect uh, protect him while he's sleeping. These two noblemen, uh, the husbands of his daughters, practically just jump out the window. They're they're hiding, and show their cowardice. And the Thid uh, wakes up, sees all of this alarm. And he just gets up, marches over to the lion, grabs it by the scruff of its neck, and throws it back at its cage. And everyone is uh, astonished and in awe of the Thid's uh, bravery. He was able to just <laughs> confidently march up to a lion. Uh, it shows how larger than life he is. And I swear there's a lion episode in the second part of Don Quixote. I think there's like a traveling caravan that has a lion in its cage and Don Quixote goes and tries to uh, break the lion out or something. I'd have to, I have to check. I, I'm almost positive there's a lion scene in Don Quixote that does not go nearly as well for Don Quixote. Not only are these uh, two noblemen cowards, but they are, they are also um, treacherous. After just a single battle, uh, they go to the Thid and ask if um, they can leave the war campaign with with their uh, new wives. And the Thid agrees. He gives them um, a large amount of money. He gives them a part of their fortune. They have horses and wagons, and uh, they're they're going to leave in comfort to go. To some distant place and enjoy um, uh, their their new marriages, and they nearly just get out of uh, earshot of the Thid, the, these two noblemen with their daughters, and they turn against them. They they uh, kind of throw all of the Thid's uh, soldiers. They like get rid of them, and they um, beat uh, nearly to death their two wives. Uh, they just leave them in the woods to die, and they go off um, with all of these riches. They believe that they shouldn't have had to have married these two women because they're noblemen, and they should be married to uh, fellow nobility. And uh, this uh, deceit uh, gets back to the Thid, that uh, these two people that he took into his family uh, allowed to marry his daughters, um, just escaped with his money and beat his children nearly to death. And it reminded me, uh, as I was reading this, knowing uh, that this is this legendary, uh, brilliant strategist, um, a warring, brave, valiant man, and having something like this happen, it reminded me of... Um, John Wick having uh, his puppy get killed and think like, oh man, what is the Thid going to do to these two? They have no idea what they are 
what they've gotten themselves into, who they are dealing with. <laughs> they, they, they just <laughs> uh, stabbed in the back uh, this, this uh, legendary heroic figure. Uh, and then there, there's a resolution with that. I guess I, I won't give it away. It's, uh, it, it's uh, a story that goes through the oral tradition. So it's, this is my copy. Um, at least someone in Spain, people in Spain, I, I suppose, just know the story. Um, the, the only other thing I want to say is about the translation, which um, I don't think did me any favors. I, 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 I might be judging it too harshly, or my, my critical my criticism might be unwarranted, but I, I felt like it was um, just not a very good translation. It's show it, it's facing pages, so I'll have the uh, Spanish on the one side, and then as a curious choice, it's it's translated into prose. It's um, just sentences, um, and it feels like it's written very literally, a, a dry one-to-one uh, -one comparison of of the original Spanish. But then it also retains the cantos or the stanzas or whatever they're called, and it it just it it didn't I, I felt like it couldn't have um, I don't feel like the translation had the spirit of the original, um, and so the the difficult parts I felt um, the, the the translation just didn't help me at all. And the parts that I loved, I think the translation could have uh, made it more exciting. Um, but um, by the end of it, I loved it. Uh, it. It was really hard for me to get in, into the poem. Um, aside from the translation, I believe um, the more I learn about the history of Spain and what was going on with these war campaigns and having an understanding of uh, the regions and geological features and uh, things like that, I can I can easily see how the poem uh, would would just be a much much more enjoyable. So the, the tough parts I think are on me, and it's like this great uh, like national poem of Spain, uh, kind of in the same way that the Aeneid by uh, Virgil um, is a great national poem. We have uh, this, this man uh, running around Spain uh, creating a kingdom or something. So, um, yeah, the, the poem of the Thid. Um, and that's it. That's it. Um, thank you for watching. Let, let me know if you've uh, read the poem or if you if you know the story, if, if you're, you're in Spain and um, I, everyone just knows the story. I'd be interested to hear uh, your thoughts about it. Um, and anything else uh, I'd be interested to know. So leave a comment if you would like. And uh, thank you for watching.